It's, it's so beautiful. That, look at them. The colors, they're like, like little torpedoes. Welcome. Welcome to the Garcia Aquatics, and thank you for tuning in to my new channel. <laughs> my new channel. <laughs> oh, look at them. Look at them. Destroying it. Oh, today there's nothing else. I love it. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Garcia Aquatics. Thank you for tuning in to my channel. And also, let me just start it off like this. I can't believe I just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> All right. It's so beautiful. This is what we're here today. We're going to be here talking about my beautiful Bucktooth Tetras. As you can see how they are, they're very little active right now. They, I think they're waiting for food, but I'm not going to feed them at this moment. But today we're going to be talking about them. We're going to be talking about how big they get, what tank size we need, what they eat, and how long do they live. So, first things first, let's hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and the like button. All right. Yes. Bucktooth tetras are very aggressive. And the way I say this, aggressive, I say it's like an expert fish. For you to understand more about these guys, they're very aggressive. You cannot, you cannot put any other type of fish in there with scales and stuff like that because what they're known for, they like to be schooling together and, and they'll pass by the fish, peeling out the, the scales little by little until the fish doesn't have no more scales. And they'll eat them up. They almost, like they say, they are um, piranhas, type of piranhas, but they're not that like the piranhas. They just piranhas will eat everything. Okay, let's not gonna get off a of topic. We're here talking about the buck tooth tetras, also known as the exons. How big do they get? Well, they're kept in a captivity in a home, in the tanks that you guys have. They usually get to like four inches to five inches, but out in the wild, they get to at least six inches and where you can find them you can find them some LFS stores or some of the box stores as I seen in a box store they had they had them but they didn't know what it was until I explained to them what it was so they took it out not to sell it to nobody I don't know what else they did with it but other than that that's not what we hear about we hear about these but two tetras so Yes, they are predatory, predatory wild and, and widely aggressive. They're schooling fish. And they are also from um, from the, the, the native Amazon basin, Guyana. And when I usually feed them, and they love this, you give them some brine shrimp or some blood worms, some tilapia, cut up all the tilapia in the lake, cut up in little, little chunks, give them flakes or pellets. Here we go. Just give it a few. They're working like a team. Look at that. Basically, the borrowing, they're just tearing that, that brine shrimp cube. And whatever's left, they're just bringing it over. Look at them. Look at them. Destroying it. Oh, today's nothing else. Now they're on the bonsai tree. Look at them, look at them. Boom. Oh, so there's no more. One takes it. Boom. The other got it. Nope. He wants it all. Boom. He ate it all. Look how they are. What do you guys think? You guys like it? You like it? I love it. Well, they like to have their the temperature the water temperature like 72 to 82 degrees. But the, the ideal um, temperature is good for them is 75 degrees. And the pH, also, you, I always check the pH. I usually check it once a week just to make sure that everything is just right with the pH level. And the pH level should be at least 5.5 to 7.5. No more than that and no lower than 5.5. Um, they like to be in the dark area. They don't like to be too much in the, bright, in the brightness. But I like to keep it in the brightness because I like to see them schooling around. Because I like them to, for them to move around. I like that. They don't like that much, uh, the, the substrate, they don't like it too, too bright. They like it dark. They like that dark substrate. And I go with the sand instead, instead of putting the, uh, the black gravels. I just go with the, <clears throat> I just go with the, the, the sand, the black sand. And I got my corridors down there. They do their, they do their work. They wait for the scraps. It's better to, if you're going to get a school of 
12. It's the best thing to do is to get a, a bigger tank and like a 55, a 40, 40 and above. To be in, you know, to, to be in that predicament or the right way to say it. It's better to have a bigger tank because they're very schooling. They like to swim around a lot. And if you get less than 12 also, if you get less than 12, they won't be that schooling. They, they won't be... Uh, they'll start looking for the weak ones and start killing each other, and you don't want that. They last at least about 10 years, give and take. If you're well taken care of them, who knows? You can probably stretch 10, another 12, or another 5 years to them. But for breeding, I do not know. Any questions or anything you want to ask me, just leave it down in the comments down below, and I'll tell you more about them. And I, as soon as I have that chance, I'll get right back to you and everything. I'll give you all the information you really need about them. And um, these are my uh, my exodons. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And to the next one. See ya.